Hello, I'm Matthew Gavidia. Today in MGH Life Sciences Medical World News, the American Journal of Managed Care is pleased to welcome Dr. Victoria Smith, a board-certified family physician and a member of the Oshner Health Board of Directors. Can you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work? Well, my name is uh, Victoria Smith, uh, and as you mentioned, I'm a family physician. Uh, at uh, Auctioner Health uh, in the New Orleans area, uh, and um, very happy to be able to be able to talk to you today. Can you give a brief overview of the phase two, three clinical trial by Pfizer assessing their investigational vaccine against COVID-19? So it is going to be a study over, or my participation will be over the next 24 to 26 months. Uh, it started with uh, my first initial visit. First of all, I was screened uh, for um, being in, in good health to be able to be part of the trial. Um, there was a review of my health conditions, any medications uh, that I was taking. And then it is a randomized, uh, double-blind controlled trial. Uh, so I was uh, then you know, put in either the placebo or the vaccine arm. Uh, so the first uh, uh, visit, I received um, an injection. Uh, then three weeks later, um, I went back uh, to receive another injection. Uh, and then I'll be followed one month after the injection, six months, 12 months, and then 24 months. Um, after each injection, um, that uh, evening for uh, seven uh, days, I was asked to monitor any symptoms that I might have uh, using um, an app, uh, which was pretty easy. I got a nice uh, thermometer uh, as well. Um, and then every um, week over the next two years, I'm just asked to um, report on any symptoms of COVID-19 that I might have. Why did you decide to participate in the trial and what was the vaccine candidates administration? You know, the injection, I didn't know what I was being injected, you know, whether it was a placebo or actually the investigational uh, vaccine, but it was the same process as receiving any other vaccine, you know, receiving a flu vaccine or a tetanus. So, you know, nothing scary or, you know, really out of the ordinary. Um, I wanted to participate in the trial for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, um, you know, as a family physician, I've definitely had, you know, treated patients who thought they had COVID, had COVID. Um, I did have um, at least three of my patients who did uh, succumb to this illness and, and died of COVID um, in the hospital. Um, so I really, you know, in studying more, learning more, recognized that because this was a novel uh, virus, uh, that there was not going to be any treatment soon. Um, and so the real answer was going to be a vaccine in terms of preventing um, and protecting people against developing the illness. Um, so, you know, as a physician, you know, I very much wanted to be a, a part of, of history. Um, and of trying to improve the situation for myself and my patients and society. Um, also, you know, as an African American female, you know, I was very aware that this had a disproportionate impact on uh, black and brown peoples. Um, so I wanted to be part of, um, you know, anything that could help to decrease um, this burden. Um, I also know that for many African Americans, Latinos, um, you know, we've had a, a sordid history uh, when it comes to medical research, and many times research has been uh, done upon um, black and brown bodies and not together with. Uh, so, you know, I really wanted to be part of a trial that I thought uh, would do this safely you know, ethically um, in a way that um, I could have an impact on uh, doing, creating a solution as opposed to just, you know, worrying, um, you know, as I think for everybody, you know, it was so, it's still kind of nerve wracking. Um, and so I wanted to be part of a solution. As you just kind of alluded to, and an issue that has been spotlighted amid the pandemic is the disproportionate effect of COVID-19 on minority communities particularly Black Americans. Can you speak about how the current trial will count for different racial and socioeconomic backgrounds in their findings? Well, I think that one of the, um, the goals of the trial um, is to, to enroll 
um, as many um, African Americans, Latinos uh, in the trial as possible uh, to be able to assess, are there any differences in uh, vaccine efficacy or safety um, that might be due to racial or ethnic differences? Uh, hopefully there are not, uh, but you don't really know until you actually study that. Um, and so that was also, once again, knowing the kind of mistrust many times African American uh, communities uh, and people can have. I also wanted to be a role model of, you know, of participation um, in this trial. Um, many of the patients that I care for are African American and Latino, um, and they have been, I think, impressed to see that I've been part of it. Um, and I've been able to encourage um, patients to think about them or their family members taking part in this trial. Why did Oshner decide to participate in the trial and how many healthcare workers besides yourself are participating? Um, well, I think Oshner has a long history of being involved in research and innovation. Um, we took care of a lot of patients uh, with COVID. Uh, so I think that, you know, Ochsner's participation in this trial and clinical research in general just really falls in line with our mission to heal, serve, educate, you know, and innovate. So it, it totally follows along with what we do. Um, I'm not, I can't speak to the exact number of healthcare, other healthcare providers um, who are uh, in, enrolled um, in the study. Um, but I can say, you know, I've had colleagues reach out to me as a result of seeing that I was uh, participating and, um, you know, also patients who found out that I was participating, you know, asking me um, more about participating themselves. Going back to a topic we kind of alluded to before, after being administered either the vaccine candidate or placebo, how did you feel? Um, I felt okay. I mean, the evening after both injections, I did have a little soreness uh, in my arm. And the next day after both injections, I felt a little fluey, you know, nothing major. Um, but I really hope <laughs> that I did actually get the vaccine candidate, uh, but I don't know. What should the general public understand about the COVID-19 vaccine trials? Well, I think that they should understand that there are many uh, vaccine trials going on uh, because I think that there is, you know, COVID-19 affecting the world in a way that I think a virus has not affected the world since 1918, you know, the flu pandemic at that point. Um, there are lots of companies that are working to develop a safe and effective um, vaccine. Um, I would also want the general public to know that um, the processes to protect uh, participants are very strenuous and stringent. Um, and so, you know, there's constant monitoring, first of all, from the beginning to make sure that this is gonna be a safe trial uh, for patients. There's an extremely long informed consent process. Um, that is 19 pages, uh, which is great. So there, you know, no one's being enrolled in this without really understanding the pros and cons of their participation, uh, being able to drop out of the trial, you know, at any point. Um, and I think one of the things I would just really encourage and hope that many people in the general public would consider being part of a COVID vaccine trial, and especially uh, people of color. And lastly, do you have any other concluding thoughts? I think that this is um, really historic, um, important um, research. I uh, really hope that all of uh, your listeners uh, will consider uh, being part of, um, part of these trials. Um, and it is uh, when I reflect on the fact that I get a flu vaccine every year, um, I know that there were people who at some point in history were part of trials to test to make sure that that flu vaccine was safe and effective. And now every year, you know, we all take a flu vaccine without thinking about it. So I would just, you know, really encourage uh, people to think about being part of making history and protecting not only people now, uh, but you know, into the future.
to learn more, visit our website at admc.com. I'm Matthew Gavidia. Thanks for joining us.